and I win the competition for having the largest title for the presentation on the programme today, and I've, I've actually curtailed it on, on this slide because I couldn't actually uh, fit it all on. So what I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, about is about um, how um, the population of Dudley is changing, how people live, the, the, the way that people live their lives is changing, and what that means in terms of people's health and well-being, but also about Dudley the place and how that's changing. And then what also, um, sort of pulling on the theme that um, Paul and Tony have mentioned already, um, the, the financial challenge um, that we all face, how that all, those two things together mean that we're going to need to work differently. Um, and so what I'm going to just start with doing is just talking a little bit um, about how our health and wellbeing is changing um, in the borough. And I'm pulling this information from our joint strategic needs assessments. Um, uh, it's, just, it's just moving on its own, isn't it? Um, our joint strategic needs assessment, um, JSNA, which is one of the board's four responsibilities, um, is to undertake a joint strategic needs assessment. And it's aimed really to identify the, the main sort of issues that affect people's health and wellbeing in Dudley. Um, and that means not just information about, about people's health and people's health status, but also um, about the place and about the, the way that people mm -hmm. live their lives. Um, and it, the, the, the JSNA provides intelligence to inform the health and wellbeing strategy, so to inform what the priorities are of the health and wellbeing board. And our JSNA <coughs> takes a life course <coughs> approach, so it thinks about people um, and everything about people and people's lives across their life course. So, um, in terms of the people as a whole, um, the, the population of Dudley, as, as elsewhere in this country, the population, oops, population is ageing. Um, and also what's happening is the way that people live is changing. So, um, we, we, more and more older people live on their own, families are different, the way that families live is different. So, no longer do we have... Um, you know, your typical nuclear family. We have people living on their own for longer, people living in single-person households um, for longer. We also, uh, the diversity of our population is changing as well. Um, so our, our communities are changing. We've got new and emerging communities um, moving into the borough. One size doesn't fit all. We're, we're changing um, in terms of the way that we live our lives. And another thing that's really important and part of our... Um, a consequence, if you like, of our ageing population is that the numbers and proportion of the people in the borough that work and that are of working age is reducing. Um, and in terms of the economic base and, and um, the, 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 the product productivity, if you like, of the borough, that will have an impact um, on all of our lives. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the place, um, the environment, um, we had a really interesting discussion last night at Cabinet, actually, um, about the, um, the um, uh, air quality supplementary planning guidance. Um, and one of, one of the issues that we have... Oh, do you know? Um, <laughs> I don't know why. I've, I've obviously set it wrong so that it, um, it just moves on its own. So one of the, one of the issues um, is around um, air quality. Um, we, we do worse than our neighbours and worse than other urban areas in terms of air quality. Um, and um, we also, um, we also are, um, have a lot of extra winter deaths in the winter months um, caused by fuel poverty. So, so our housing and some of the charts that are on this picture show that housing isn't always meet, meeting people's needs. Um, and also the ch key challenge for us is that we're falling behind our neighbours in terms of economic growth. So what we need to be looking at is um, how we can make sure that work and healthy work and that we have the necessary skills to build a competitive economy in the borough, because these things are the real root causes of, of health and well-being in Dudley. So going across very briefly across the life course, if it doesn't move on, you get, um, you get a, a, the, the adults one popping in in a minute. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, so the key issues around um, children and young people, um, we've got, um, and it's not just in Dudley, but it's across the country, we've got increasing... Um, rates of child poverty. Um, we were making really good progress in this country around child poverty, but unfortunately um, that has changed now and child poverty is becoming more of an issue to the extent that it's going to be redefined, actually, I heard on the news um, 
uh, last week. Um, we also have poor outcomes for new and expectant families across, um, across a whole range of issues. So we are making some good progress now around breastfeeding, but actually we've still got too many women that smoke when they're pregnant, we've got too many women that end up obese um, during the pregnancy, we've got higher levels of teenage pregnancy. Um, and um, and by what we've, I think our challenge has been that we've looked at all of these in isolation and what we need to do is we need to look at um, with young women um, and, um, and, and pregnant women in families and think differently about what we can do to support them have better aspirations um, and, um, and look after the health and well-being um, while they're pregnant and, and in the child's early life. We've also got higher than expected numbers of children looked after. Um, we've got issues around the mental health and resilience of young people in relation to risk-taking behaviour, bullying and self-harm. Um, and, and that really impacts on, on people for the rest of their life. Um, we've got um, quite staggering um, gaps in educational outcomes um, for, for people between different groups. Um, which means that people, that, that, that children that start in more disadvantaged circumstances end up um, continuing to be in more disadvantaged circumstances through the education system. Um, and we've also got some opportunities um, by some of our processes to learn um, about, about the, the circumstances in which, um, which children die or where we have poor um, children have poor outcomes. In terms of adults, um, we've got higher than average levels of um, obesity, physical activity and alcohol hospital admissions. Um, and and um, we're going to hear later around some of the things that we need to do around the environment, the supportive environments that, that um, we can have in the borough to encourage healthy behaviours. Um, we've also got um, large numbers of people with long-term conditions that are not diagnosed. Um, we've got uptake of, of cancer screening programmes is low. So we're not able to prevent the consequences of some of these conditions um, on people's lives as well as we could do. And there's lots of opportunities for us to do that through NHS health checks, case finding, the vanguard work around people with long-term conditions. And then in terms of older people, it's pretty depressing, um, isn't it, this, um, this uh, part of the presentation. Um, we've got, um, we know that um, we've got higher level, high levels of social isolation um, among older people. So more and more older people living alone and feeling lonely. And, um, and um, what we need to do then is really value and celebrate the contribution that older people make and promote social connectedness. <laughs> Gosh, it's just not going to stop, is it? Um, we've got um, high levels of emergency admissions for falls and increasingly high levels of emergency admissions for falls. Um, and we've also got the majority of people we estimate with dementia in the borough aren't actually diagnosed with dementia, so aren't getting either the support or the treatment that they could benefit from. Um, and, um, and also emergency admissions at the end of life um, are higher than expected as well. So what that means is people are going into hospital to die um, as opposed to being supported at home. Um, and I, don't, I have no idea how to make it stop doing this. Um, so the key challenge, it's really depressing. Um, we've got increasing demands. We've got an ageing population. The way we live our lives means that we're more likely to be isolated, more likely to be on our own. And we've also, at the same time of all of this, which would be challenge enough, we've got significant and unprecedented reductions in budgets um, for the public sector. And we've got really good evidence that we've got increasing inequality. So it's really pretty, pretty grim. However, um, <laughs> look what we've got, um, and um, those of you that know me know I'm not really a grim sort of um, person, and, and as you can tell by my accent, I'm not from these parts either, um, so I'm new to Dudley, and when you arrive here, you just get, um, I mean, I felt, I've been here four months, and I've completely fallen in love with the place, because it's fantastic, because we've got enormous um, sort of plethora of parks, green spaces, canals, tow paths, we've got a fantastic proud industrial heritage, which we actually really celebrate through our cultural sites and our cultural venues. Um, we've got uh, bustling town centres, Briley Hill, um, goodness me, you, you, can barely, you can barely get um, on the pavement for the, the amount of people on um, uh, shopping in Briley Hill. 
Um, we've got a fantastic, thriving voluntary and community sector in the borough, which really, I mean, I've worked in some places with brilliant voluntary and community sectors, but it really does um, uh, sort of really shine in, in this borough. We've got an innovative clinical or transformational, depending on the answer to Tony's question, clinical um, commissioning group. Um, and we've also got a council that's really working hard and striving to be a community council and to work differently with our communities. We've got plans for a combined authority and I think some of the themes that we'll, we'll talk about later will, will help us to think about some of the opportunities that we'll get there, which will really focus initially on economic growth, but again we know that that can have a positive impact on, on people's health and well-being. And we've got strong and enduring partnerships um, in the borough. Um, and um, what, what we need, therefore, I would say to do, in, what all of this means, so all the challenge, all the changes in our population's health, the way we live our lives, all the challenges we've got, and all those assets, all those fantastic things we've got in the borough, um, I suggest mean that we need to work together and work differently. Um, we cannot sustain the system that we're operating at the moment. We're going to need to reorientate our services to be more preventative. And I don't just mean a health physical activity service or a, or a um, stop smoking service. Our whole system is going to have to be reorientated to be more preventative because we cannot continue with the increasing levels of demand that we've got. We're going to need, if we're going to do that, not only to focus on supporting people to be healthy and, and prevention um, once we know that they've got, they've got health problems or are at high risk of having health problems, we need to address the causes of the causes of poor health and wellbeing. And I'm delighted that the, the next couple of presentations will, will really focus on some of that. We need to understand and build and make use of the brilliant things we've got in the borough, the things that we've got here that, can really, that do already really make a difference to people's lives. And one of the I'm going to cough. One of the workshops um, later on will focus on um, on this. <coughs> and um, we've also um, going to need to make better use of information technology. My challenge, I guess, is making, we need to make joint work in the default option. It's not just something we do every now and again. It's the way we work in Dudley. That's the only way we're going to address the challenges that we've got. And we need to continue to strive to narrow the gap in health and wellbeing. So I'm just going to finish, um, because that's all been quite conceptual, with what we're actually um, thinking that we need to do. What do we actually need to do? Um, the first thing is um, all, all about Dudley, which is our joint strategic needs assessment. We're, we're, really, um, we're really innovative in Dudley in that we've got um, the fire service um, actually chairing our JSNA group and leading on our JSNA. And what that means is we've got a different and a new and a refreshing approach. So we're refreshing how we use intelligence about our population and work differently um, to make the best possible decisions that we can. We're, going to, we're looking to do some work to find out about what's great about Dudley, because even though it's a fantastic place, when you talk to people, as I do at bus stops and train stations, they actually think it, they're, they're quite down on the place. And I think we need to make visible how fantastic Dudley is. Um, and that's something that we're going to be working on. Um, we, we, we're going to be looking at and working with um, on a new deal for Dudley families um, to, to think about how do we really support families um, in, in the borough. Um, and as you've heard um, from Paul and Tony, we're developing the new models of care, which will include or reorientating the system to be more preventative, um, particularly for people with long-term conditions. And the other thing we're, we're going to do again is rather than think about older people's health in isolation, dementia, physical activity, we're actually going to look at an integrated healthy ageing programme to keep older people connected, active and well for longer. So they're the things that we're, we're hoping to do, and there'll be opportunities in the workshops um, to talk about and explore a number of, of these issues. So that's me. Thank you. And sorry about the slides.